and now it'll be very interesting to see how far he moves now before he does lie down again or who knows what he might come across. He may come across some more hunting opportunities in the next few moments. But the main thing that we should be happy about is that he is on the move. And now we get to see him and get to see him doing what very few people get to see leopard do. They're usually such shy and secretive animals that it's only in very certain areas where you get to see them so relaxed with vehicles and carrying on with their daily business with very little concern of our presence at all. Now you can see he's sniffing those dead leaves very intently. There's a strong likelihood that another leopard would have sent marked against those leaves and he's now processing that information. You'll notice he didn't send mark on top of that or so want to compete in any way, but he did want to process that information. The body language is really wonderful to watch, and it appears like he's certainly very intent, and who knows, Maybe he will get lucky this morning. It looks like there is something he is showing interest in something again now, but what it is exactly, I'm not sure yet. Well, this lilac-breasted roller, uh, there's a hornbill in the grass, and there's a lilac-breasted roller just up to the left. Oh, facing something else now. That was this, oh no, that's long gone, it was a diker. But you do see how the odds are stacked heavily against this poor animal. Even the lilac breasted roller was letting off its alarm, which you can still hear it doing. There was a small antelope, I think it was a diker, that ran off. And now everyone's shouting. Squirrels, the lilac breasted roller, you name it. They're all blowing his cover. Just looped ahead so that we can approach him front on and that will hopefully reverse and get frontal shots of him as he comes towards us. Which he's about to do. We got him there. Just paced a few meters past our vehicle, and what a sight that was. and see what happens a little bit later.
a lot of you may be wondering when we are following animals like leopard and lion. Are we interfering with their hunting and chasing away potential prey? And yes, obviously sometimes we may chase off an antelope, especially if we are driving through thicker vegetation. But in the same breath, we could potentially chase an antelope towards him. It's, it's completely unintentional. And as many times as we chase prey away, we could actually aid in, in the animal's hunting. The bottom line is, if this animal did not want us to find it and follow it, and it did feel that we impacted negatively on its life, it wouldn't allow us to find it. They can survive in and amongst humans without humans knowing them being there because they are so shy and elusive when they want to be. This area has been a photographic safari destination for over 50 years now where people have been coming here and viewing leopards just as we are now for many, many decades. And that has allowed the leopards to become relaxed with the vehicles and they allow us into their lives and it's quite simple if they didn't want us to see them or they felt that we weren't that we were impacting negatively on their hunting they wouldn't let us find them so I think that's the main fact to the story is that of course there's going to be some minimal impact of us driving around but it's unintentional and how else are we going to be able to follow and view these animals and show them to people all around the world, including yourselves, unless we follow them. It's an interesting marking. It's not a regular scent mark that a leopard will perform, but he does appear to be scent marking. So that's a very good point made by VM, and I was about to touch on that. He does keep doing these kind of miniature scent marks, but they're not the full-blown regular scent mark that you see adult leopards doing. Is he going to head down into the riverbed here? Yes, he is. Which is not a problem because I know of a little shortcut that is going to take us down into the riverbed. So. time wisely to get into the right position.
I'm hoping he's going to continue. He's going to come around one of these corners and he's going to be walking down the riverbed straight towards us. still here. I've just got visual of him. He's lying up on that eroded there. bank and we're just down on the river bit below him. Okay, copy. Well, well spotted VM and it appears we did end up in the right spots, and it's always lovely being below these animals when filming them, or at least eye level with them. The camera is mounted probably a meter and a half off or above the ground. So often it's shooting down on the animals, and it's always a great angle to have shooting up on them. Now, a lot of you may be wondering why I drove so quickly through that little section of vegetation on that little track to get us into this position. And it's because if you look around this area that we're in, if he was to cross over the riverbed and not stay in it and we didn't see where he moved to, there's no way we'd be able to continue viewing him. So... As VM now pans around, you'll get an idea of exactly how thick it is here. Has he seen something? He seems to be intently focusing on something, but we'll keep an eye on him. And as VM pans around, you'll see why I just wanted to make sure that the leopard did not shake us off its trail. I know how difficult it can be to find these animals, so when we've got one, we've got to make the most of it because there have been periods where we can go for a week without seeing a leopard, so by staying in touch with them and understanding where they move, it certainly helps in finding them again. too much is going to change here for the next few minutes. We'll give it a moment or two and then maybe we can cut across to Mark and catch up with him and get an update of what he's been up to with Romeo for the last while. And we'll be sure to stay with this leopard and if there's any action we'll let Nicky know and we'll come back over here.